Hmm. I'm gonna put these parkers on. This is a really small smoker, so I don't have a lot of options as far as positioning goes. We'll just kind of see what happens. In the hopes of the back part being a little bit hotter, I'm hoping that the heat will kind of come up that way, and maybe this will be a little bit cooler, hoping that the crack in the door is gonna let a little bit of cool air in there. Got a position like that, meat side up. I think it's gonna be pretty even, but I don't really know for sure. Definitely put a water pan in there though. We're gonna cook this thing at 275 degrees. If it sounds like it's sizzling or maybe it's cooking a little too hot, I'm gonna back off on the heat a little bit, but that's barbecue, just gotta figure it out. Well, it's been about two hours. So I think we're gonna check these ribs for color. They should be about right. They're probably not too dark, but what I'm looking for is kind of a golden mahogany kind of color. I'm gonna spritz it with a little apple cider vinegar, maybe a little bit of apple juice, just to get it kind of wet, and then I'm gonna sauce it with whatever sauce. I'm using a sauce off the table here at the barbecue restaurant, but you could use anything you want. Just make sure it doesn't have too much sugar. I'm gonna open up this thing, and remember if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Oh, hey, little bud. Ah, it's looking real good. So that's about the color I'm looking for before I sauce it. You could do it as light, you could do it as dark as you want to do. It's totally up to you, but this is about where I like it. I'm going to spritz a little bit of apple cider vinegar. You could do apple juice, you could do water, you could do pretty much anything you want. So I'm just going to get it kind of wet to add moisture, not maybe so much for flavor for me because I'm really relying more on the smoke and the rub but I want to get it wet so when I sauce this, it's going to kind of spread out and it's not going to get real streaky and stuff. And also if it's cold outside, you should probably preheat your sauce because if you don't preheat it, it's going to get gloopy and it's just going to kind of sit there and not look real pretty. You could also do a half and half. That's what a lot of people do. That's half sauce and half water, or half vinegar, something like that. But, um, anywho, when I sauce these things, I try to go with the ribs a little bit, although hard to do on this cooker. And then I'm going to spray it again to kind of spread out that. I'm looking for a mist. That's pretty good to me. I'm going to let that set for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to flip it over, check out the other side, and I'm probably going to wrap it about that time. All right, we've let the sauce set. It's been about 15 minutes. Woo! Looking good. Oh, nice. So I'm going to use a towel to pick up these ribs. The last thing you want to do is work so hard to get a pretty color and make it all even and then shred the bark off with some tongs. That would be awful. So I'm going to use a towel and hopefully I won't tear anything up. But before I really sauce it, I'm going to look at it in the good light. So they're looking super good. That's about the color I want. I'm going to flip them over and check the membrane side. Color looks great on those super golden, kind of caramely. Got lots of mahogany up in there. Now that I know for sure that I want to wrap these things up, take my trusty spitzer, just to help the sauce spread out a bit. I'm just gonna squirt some sauce, and this is just a normal sauce that we use here at the barbecue place. It's just the sweet sauce off the table. You could use anything you want. You could go to the store, you could make something. Lay it down, meat side down. I like to throw a little spritz on there, just for fun. Squirt some sauce on those little guys. Looking real nice. And the way I wrap these things, one over on one side. If you got a bone that's poking out, go ahead and rip that thing off. If you have bones poking out, it's probably gonna tear your foil. Wrap it up real tight. Put them back on the cooker. Shut the door. Maintain some temperatures. So we've had our ribs cooking after we wrapped them for about two hours. It's time to check them. It wasn't a very large rack, so I suspect they're gonna be done. Open up the lid. I'm gonna use a towel, my trusty towel. I'm gonna walk around. I always put my left hand under where the breastbone is. That's just kind of how, what I'm used to. And when I pick it up, I'm seeing how pliable it is. If they feel like they're just falling apart, they're probably overcooked. If it feels tight, you know, I can kind of just get an idea how loose they feel. These are very much done. I will put them there. So with ribs, you really don't take a temperature like you might with poultry or something else. It's really mostly by feel. This is gonna be the thinner part, so it's gonna get done a little bit faster. This tends to have more fat. That's where, the, where we trimmed off the breastbone. It'll also cook fast, but generally for me, the last ones to get finished are right around in here. Pick it up, you can kind of tell by feel right about there. You can try to twist the bone a little bit. A lot of people do that. 
I really just go by feel, but for this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip it over. And see, when we wrapped it, we put a little bit of sauce in there. If you notice the juice that's in there, that's mostly the fat that's cooked out of the ribs after we wrapped them up. Oh, look, a toothpick. Got a poke in there. That feels real nice. It's loose, it feels like it's gonna kinda pull apart. You can see the fibers kinda pulling apart real easily. It does need to rest for a little bit though, so we're gonna leave this thing out for a few minutes, we're gonna let it rest. It's gonna kinda reabsorb a little bit of moisture that maybe it may have lost, although it looks pretty moist to me. Kinda wrap it up kinda loose, let it rest for about 20, 30 minutes before we slice it. <laughs> so we've got the ribs rested, they're looking nice. They're looking real nice. It's time to cut these little guys. What you're looking for is the direction of the bones. If it's overcooked a little bit and you hit a bone, or if it's undercooked and you hit a bone, it's just gonna not look real pretty. So you definitely wanna kinda line up between the bones. One thing you could also look at where the meat is raised up between the bones. And that kinda tells you where you're gonna wanna cut these things. So, with that in mind, we're gonna start slicing. That's a great little snack right there. It's really nothing to it. It's pretty easy. So you've got a rib. What you're looking for in that rib is you want to be able to see a smoke ring around there to show that you actually got smoke on it. You want it to be real, as tender as you can get it without actually falling off the bone. I think these ribs are looking real nice. All right, so we got this rack sliced up. I think it's about time to eat. This one looks pretty good. Let's get this party started. Hmm.